Hi guys. So in this video, I will be telling you about my Virtusa round interview experience. So I have given Virtusa like few weeks back. In that, I have given some rounds, like three rounds happen in that. So what all kind of rounds was happened for me, and how have I cleared those rounds? Those all things will be giving you in details in this video. So stay tuned till the end. I will be telling you each and everything, like what all kind of questions has been asked. So let's get started. I will tell you mention you specifically like it was for around five plus years of experience and in that there was like pool drive kind of thing happened like there were a lot of people from different companies have come over there around 60 to 70 people were there it was a pool campus kind of thing so yeah so it took me around the entire day to complete the, this process for the interview processes and yeah so this was it so let's start with the interview so first round was there like some chatbot kind of interview experience was there so what was happened so they have sent one mail in that there was one link in that link basically there will be one chatbot who will be asking us questions like there will be no physical interviewer rather than there will be a bot interviewer who will be asking you questions and then we have to answer them either by typing it via text or else you have to record it Okay, via mic and then you can edit it and then you can send. So this was something new for me because I haven't given this kind of chatbot interviews before. But yeah, so this was my first experience. So let me share you like how it looks like. So here, if you can observe, it, it looks something like this. So there was already one question before that, like what why we are making use of microservice, in which scenario we have to go for a microservice or monolithic. We have to give in detail explanation. So I have recorded it because writing these much words, it will be very much tedious, right? So it's better to record by your mic. So there is one option of mic also. If you can see over there, there is one option of mic, okay? So you can record your, uh, your audio and you can send it across and you can edit it wherever you want to edit any words. And then after completion of this uh, sentence, if it looks fine for you, you can click on enter. Then there will be one chatbot. There is no person uh, in physical like Sydney. So it's like a chatbot interviewer. See, you can give send. You can see the response. It's telling thank you for your comprehensive explanation about this. So this was the question like when to make use of monolithic over microservice or microservice over monolithic. Let's move on to our final topic. So like this, it it has tried to make it more like communicative. Okay, so it will ask questions in such a way that a normal interviewer ask. So now let's, next question was, could you please design a RESTful API for simple blog application? This should include endpoints for creating, reading, updating, deleting posts. Okay. Then you have to outline some endpoints, HTTP methods and expected request response. So there's nothing like you have to uh, write the pseudo code, normal pseudo code for CRUD operation kind of thing to understand like how REST APIs actually in internally works for a normal application. So I've written that uh, CRUD operation for simple blog applications. Okay. So yeah, this kind of question was there. So basically, they will it will be proctored, and uh, you have to the best way is to record it, and then you can upload it. Okay. So like this, it will be there. So we have to score uh, around two point five to three approx. So if you score three out of five, you are passed. Okay. So this will be your first round. Second round, if you clear this chatbot round, most of uh, like most of them have cleared this chatbot round, and if someone has not given, so they were told after giving one technical round there like round two there, they are again giving this round one, okay, because each round is important to clear. So after clearing this round one, I went with round two. So in round two, there were like uh, a good set of questions that has been asked to me. It was like around 35 to 40 minutes interview and there are certain set of questions that has asked. Let's see what all kind of questions. So first question was how to start thread with runnable interface. So this is more most commonly asked questions uh, to Fraser to experienced as well. I'm having around eight plus years of experience still this question is asked. So you can see like thread is very much relevant now also. Okay. So a normal thread, how can you start thread t equal to new thread t dot start. This is a normal way to run the thread. What is another way to start a thread? By implementing runnable interface. One is through extending thread class and second is to implementing runnable interface. But how will you implement it? That is a thing, right? So if you know that runnable interface is having run method internally, one abstract method called run method internally. And the run method doesn't accept any input, nor does it return any output. Okay, if you know how runnable interface works. But can we start the threads from runnable interface reference? Just like we are doing thread t equal to new thread t dot start. Can we do runnable t equal to new runnable then override run method then t dot start? Can we do that? 
this is the place where most of the people fails no we can't do like that okay because runnable is just an interface we have to provide the implementation via thread class okay so what we can do we have to write our own runnable reference then we have to provide our own lambda function so this was the requirement we have to implement runnable interface via lambda function okay and then we have to pass that parameter in the thread class reference like once you do runnable ref equal to then we have to put lambda function provides and then some sop statements let's suppose this is runnable then you can do thread th equal to new thread we have to pass that runnable reference okay because without thread class reference you can't start the thread with runnable reference you can't start the thread you need thread class reference to start the thread this is very much important so with thread class reference you can do ref dot start okay so like that you have to start the thread so always and always remember we can't start thread from runnable interface reference rather we should pass that as a parameter of thread class reference and then you can start the thread so this is very important for interview next question is what are the features of spring boot application so as you all know spring boot is having a lot of features and there are a lot of differences between spring and spring boot okay so spring boot is having auto configuration feature there is like rapid application development feature it will give your uh, production ready application within smaller amount of time okay and we don't have to configure any tomcat or anything like that it will be auto configured and we have don't have to think much about the configuration related stuff you just have to focus upon your business logic so these are some of the differences between Spring and Spring Boot and some of the benefits of Spring Boot. So like this, you have to explain. And then there is added Spring Boot application annotation is there, which contains added configuration, enable auto configuration and component scan. So internally, it has all the benefits and dependency injection, which you can do. So there are a lot of inbuilt benefits are there with Spring Boot, which Spring doesn't have. Okay, so these are the questions that may be asked to you. Next question was on Swagger. What is a Swagger? How will you implement Swagger? What are actuators? So as we all know, with the help of Swagger, basically we can design your API. Like if I am hitting the endpoint, then what is actually happening? Okay, so there are multiple implementation of Swagger with the help of, uh, there are multiple annotations like at the rate API operation is there, at the rate schema is there. Okay, so internally there are multiple an uh, annotations with the help of that. And then there is uh, one uh, dependency we have to add like a web MVC, um, open uh, like open api web mvc ui build uh, dependency we have to add for swagger then only you can uh, implement all the annotations present within swagger so those libraries need to be imported okay and then after implementation of swagger we can just check like how is everything working and uh, is the endpoints are actually working by hitting the endpoints and what all uh, you can pass the uh, actually description what that what that endpoint actually does so everything can be customized, can be descripted, okay, with very much information, you can pass it via Swagger, okay. And you can hit the endpoints and see like whether those endpoints are working fine or not. So these are the benefits you can get with Swagger, okay. And then at the actuator, so actuator is um, basically to maintain the health status of your application, okay. So it can be visited via localhost 8080 slash actuator. Then within actuator, there are multiple, uh, URLs you can go like slash actuator slash health to check the health status of your application slash actuator slash beans you can check like what all beans are perfectly running fine okay so which all servers are up which all servers are down those all things you can check it via actuator okay so these are the things you have to know and you can define your own custom actuator also okay and uh, for that we have to override one method with extending uh, health indicator so there is one uh, class called health indicator class. So we have to uh, extend that particular class and then we have to provide a check. So health indicator is working fine or not. So once the check is fine, it is running good. You have to up the server like, yes, it is working fine. Or if else, if it is not working fine, you have, you can tell like the server is down. Okay. So these are the things like how can you can go through that? Like how can you create your own custom actuator? You will get the idea of. Then the next question was on how completable future actually works. So completable feature, as you all know, it is coming as a part of Java 8 so to support asynchronous functional programming. And uh, it is having difference as compared to future. So in future, we can't chain multiple features together. So for each task, we have to write each futures. So it will be very much difficult to maintain all those futures. And one more thing in future, uh, if the thread is waiting, uh, it is blocking basically the main thread until unless it is returning some data. If it is not returning any data, then main thread will be blocked. 
but in completable future this that is not the case you can provide the time and within that time if it is not working you can you can release the main thread and you can return some dummy data so these are the things and there are a lot of differences you can go to that then some questions uh, streaming questions was there there will be a list of employees so basically you have to group employees based upon their names so how will you group employees based on names uh, some normal streams based questions with grouping by method you can use so it was very simple then join query on sql was there like there will be department there will be employee then how will you join multiple tables considering that we have to uh, keep the null employees if employee data is some of data is not there then still we have to keep it so we have to make use of left join over there so these are the things that we have to understand so you have to know about left join right outer join self join inner join full outer join everything should be very much clear okay sub queries also you should be very much clear and uh, there are a lot of internal sql questions that are very much important for interviews like i want second largest salaried employee third largest salaried employee okay i want third largest salaried employee in each department so how can you uh, find it out via query so those all kind of questions are also very much important let's understand see like this was it for round 2 so in round three, it was basically non-technical person was there who was at managerial position. So he was basically having uh, informal communication, like where you live, what all tech stacks you have worked upon. Okay, so what you generally like to do in your project, how have you handled tough situations? How have you handled you know, the scenarios where um, the projects are not being delivered at right time? So these are some questions, behavioral based questions uh, that, you, uh, that you can able to answer easily with star approach. Okay, so if you don't know about star approach, you can go to Google and you can type it star approach. You will get the uh, description like how you can uh, tell any behavioral type of question with star approach. Okay, so yeah, this was it. It was not much technical, so I'm not going in depth into it. So if you are able, if you are confident about your project, you will be able to clear this round very easily. Next was round four. It was very easy. It was nothing like that. Yeah, one question, it was a little bit good. So I wanted to tell you. So it was like a project fitment round of thing in that. The question uh, was one question was on n plus one problem as well. One question was this. This was important. So if I want to fetch data from nth row to n plus mth row, so let's suppose I want to fetch data from fourth row to hundred and fourth row. So hundred records I want in between. So how how can you get that data in SQL? I want not in Java. And we can't make use of any uh, where clause or between or in or like those kind of operations we can't make use of. Then how can you fetch data? This was the question basically. You can't make use of any where clause. Okay. So how can you make use of? So this was very tricky. Basically, you have to make use of limit. And then there's one more keyword called offset. Okay. So if you want 100 records in a table, so you can tell like select star from employee limit 100 that will limit 100 but it will not limit from a specific row if you want it from a specific row you have to provide one more keyword which is offset select star from employee limit 100 offset 4 so if you pass offset 4 it will uh, remove first four records and then from fifth row you will get the next set of 100 records okay so this was it like how will you uh answer this SQL query question. So this was important question for interview perspective. So I thought to tell you. Next question was some list some of the annotations which are specific to microservices. So there are certain specific annotations which are specifically used for microservice only, not in Spring Boot. Okay. So microservice internally uses Spring Boot only. I'm not telling that, but there are some annotations which is used when you are implementing microservice only. So what are those annotations? So there are some annotations like at the rate load balanced at the rate fin client okay then at the rate enable circuit breaker okay so these are some of the annotations that i have told you which you can make use of specifically while implementing microservice and there are some others also but these were the basic ones i hope you got the idea on that yeah so next question was if user is sending xml based data and i need to return some json response from the api which you have written so how can we achieve this scenario so basically, there is something called as uh, produces and consumes in REST API, if you are aware of. So basically, in that particular customer endpoint or any endpoint, within post mapping, there is one option to pass like what kind of data you want to consume and what kind of data you want to produce as a response for that particular endpoint. Okay. So basically, there what will happen? So let's suppose the user is sending some XML kind of data as a request to that particular endpoint. So here it will be consuming 
XML. So here it, I've written media type dot application XML value. So it will be accepting some XML data. But after processing, what will happen? I need to return JSON type. So for that, basically, we need to have the dependency of Jackson. Okay, so Jackson annotation uh, dependency, we have to add it in the pom.xml file so that it will internally convert XML to JSON and then it will bind to the given response body, whatever response you want to send it across. Okay, and then there is producers. So in producers, it is accepting applications JSON. So application slash JSON type data, it will be producing as the output after converting XML to JSON via Jackson binder. Okay, so this is a thing that we have to understand. So for that, we need to have the annotation. Okay, so Jackson XML binding annotation is there that we have to add the dependency in the pom.xml file. So that will help me because if it is in JSON, then automatically it will be binded to convert to JSON only. And uh, it is by default JSON type only. But if it is XML, uh, internally you want to convert XML to JSON, then you need Jackson dependency. Okay, so that is very much important. So this was it. So I hope you got a clarity like frequently asked in interview so you should be aware of hi everybody i provide consultation calls or one-on-one -on -one session calls or one-on-one -on -one mock interview sessions for all of you so that you can ace ahead in your it interviews okay and crack the big service base and or big product based organization so how can you do that so i am taking mock interview sessions so you can go ahead in the description box below and you can book a call with me okay one on one session call and we are also having all the resources that has helped me to crack the java interview that has also i have attached in the description box below so go ahead in the description box click on the link and then uh, download all the resources that has helped me to crack the interview and if you want to go through all the interview series, then there's a 34 interview series playlist videos that I have attached in this comment box in the description box below. So go ahead and watch that as well. So it will help you boost your interview yeah, interview skills and you can clear your interview like ease. Okay, so see you inside.